Okay, so sorry I can't be there today, but uh, here is the. Uh, uh, okay, so let's get started on the material editor. So we talked a little bit about it in the last class, uh, but again, just to to make sure that we uh, understand what we're going to do, we are going to set up. Uh, make sure that our Corona materials are set up. So. Uh, we're going to use the Corona rendering engine. So let's go up here to uh, the render setup. And we want to come over here to this top part where we're showing and make sure you might say NVIDIA Mental Ray, but we want to select Corona 1.2 as the object that we're going to be using. Uh, let's take that. Now, if you have your full uh, model in, the other thing that we want to do is uh, look at uh, the uh, model and convert it to Corona. So let's do, do that for a second. So I'm, I'm using Control A to select everything. And then we're going to go up here to custom or scripting and run script. And then we're going to select Corona render and Corona Converter 1.6. So you'll click that. This will bring up a dialog box. All we want to do is come down here to Conversion uh, and make sure that all materials and maps are selected. And then we click Start Conversion. Okay, click that and uh, it will convert the scene for us. And what that will do is turn all of the lights and everything that we have into uh, objects that are Corona objects. And just to recap, I'm going to delete the sun that we have and create a new one so that we remember how, how we do that. So what we're going to do is come over here to the right hand side, uh, click on the create, come over here to lights, and we want to choose Corona. And we want to choose a Corona Sun. And what we want to click and drag is click where we want the sun and then click drag out where we want the target. And so I want to do something like that. Okay, then I come up here and you can see that it moves it up into the height. So I'm just going to click arbitrarily at this point uh, there. And then I'm going to come up here to select objects and click on that so that, that I don't create a whole bunch of different suns. But I want to click on the sun itself and make sure that that's selected. I could also click on it here. Uh, and uh, then I want to come over here to modify. So a big again over onto the right hand side. Click modify. And we see that the Corona sun is selected. And then we want to add a Corona Sky environment. And I've already done this, so that will, uh, I'm going to cancel, but you will create it. And then what it's going to do is come up and bring up the environment. So that will be seen here up in rendering. And then if we come to environment, you'll see that right here, this environment map is skylight environment and we're using that map. So that'll create us a kind of a blue sky behind. It'll give us some of the uh, basic uh, rendering uh, look that we're looking for. And so we, we now have a basic setup. So we can do a quick little test render if we come over here to rendering production. And uh, we'll kind of see. Now, yours will, might look like this because your uh, setting is at exposure level zero and that's overexposed because the basis is kind of exposed for setup for an, uh, an a, uh, interior environment. So I'm going to uh, click negative five here and you can start to see now that we have some shadows and, and that and the skylight is developed around and we get some blue, these nice colors in, in the uh, shadows. 
So that gets us a start. So already we're kind of halfway there and we haven't even really uh, started. You know, we haven't really done too much yet in terms of, of this. And uh, one of the things that I want to, uh, we're going to pay attention to a little bit today is uh, rendering out uh, this glass material here and also just going back over again the, uh, the material editor and how to use maps and that sort of thing. So, like this is overexposed. The great thing about Corona is that we can uh, adjust exposure right on the fly so that we can really get exactly what we want really quickly. So, okay. All right, so let's get in and uh, start to build some of these materials up. Okay, so the way we build materials is looking at the material editor, which is this button here. Bring that up and it comes up into a slate material editor. Uh, there's two types of material editors, two ways in which you can look at this. So this slate material uh, editor is kind of built up in, in a way, uh, it's a visual uh, programming kind of interface. So very similar to Grasshopper in which you connect uh, maps together to create a uh, uh, kind of a, a logic map of how this thing works. Inside of each one of these, if we double click here, there's a dotted uh, outline around this and this shows us in this this area here uh, the all of the the internal uh, controls that we have which is a lot but we only use a few of them uh, and we'll go over those in a little bit more detail shortly so this is uh, the basic setup the other way and if you're looking online with some of the older uh, tutorials and and by all means older tutorials are absolutely uh, valuable is that there's another mode, which is the original mode, called the Compact Material Editor. We can select that, and what we come up with is a, a, a different kind of view. It's a little bit more um, compressed view. Uh, in some ways, I like this because it is, um, it's a little bit more straightforward in terms of its... Uh, it's overhead, so it doesn't have as much graphics overhead. So if you have a slower computer and that sort of thing, this might be, I noticed that mine lags a little bit in the slate material editor, but this one works out just fine. Uh, again, the, the difference is though, is that the maps and everything that you have selected are actually kind of hidden inside here. It's basically that other little pane uh, that we showed in the material on the right hand side. But it, any sort of map is uh, kind of highlighted by this M. And then if you bring up the M, then you can see this, uh, the, the, the material map that's uh, coordinated with that. So uh, sometimes that's, um, that's helpful. Sometimes it's not. You navigate by uh, coming back here into this 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 uh, thing here, but we're going to use the, the slate mode because I think it's a little bit easier guys, for you guys to grasp what we're doing. And uh, But by all means, know that those two things happen or, or are there. And, and so they're both equally valuable. Uh, one little handy thing here is this navigator so we can see up here where we're at. The other thing that's handy is we have these tabs along the top that allows us to organize uh, by material. So uh, by right clicking here, we can create new, uh, new views, view tabs, and then we can rename them, whichever uh, we need to do. But that's, a, that's pretty helpful in keeping these things kind of uh, close and, and tight. So let's, let's go and make a material. So here's an example of a material. This is for our wood walls. And I went over this in uh, class, but I just wanted to, again, briefly go over it again. Uh, what this is showing is, again, the series of maps. So over on, on the left-hand side, we have materials. 
which are the different types of materials. We're going to focus on Corona, so you can collapse the standard and just focus on the Corona for now. And we have maps, and so the maps are all the different type of textures. So maps means a bitmap is a texture map, is an image file that we can use to uh, drive the color. But then there's all these other different types of map that come in handy, and we'll show how we're going to use a couple of them. One in this material, we're going to look at the color correction and how we can uh, augment a bitmap and change its colors for our use. Uh, another one that we're going to use is this tiles uh, when we get into the glass, so that becomes ha handy. So uh, maps are an important piece. And then uh, we have controllers. Uh, I generally haven't used those too much. And then we have scene materials. So these are all of the materials that are attached to objects within our scene right now. And so our basic workflow would be to uh, take one of these materials, drag it over here into, click and drag over into this uh, material slate editor, and then be able to uh, modify it so that it uh, starts to apply the materials and get the look that we want, okay? Uh, so let's go back and we'll turn on the maps and so all right so we've looked at this wood wall we've dragged it over from our scene materials uh, we've just grabbed this one and dragged it over as a starting point and uh, we've gone online and found a, a knotty pine jpeg which uh, is this nice kind of warm uh, color. It has the textures that we want, that I wanted, but it doesn't have the color. So what I did was I went to maps and I grabbed this uh, uh, color correction, dragged it over, and, and then I connected it. So I connected this bitmap to this map, and then I looked at, okay, so there's two different ways of going about two different color corrections that I'm using one that's darker and one that's lighter and you can see that I'm using the darker to connect with the diffuse color because as you recall the diffuse color is exactly what uh, the color uh, that we want the overall uh, object to be and then we have some other things like the reflection color and the bump map so we know that uh, a wood wall texture is not totally flat and even, so we're going to use uh, this map here to create a bump map, so give it a little bit of texture, uh, seeming texture. So basically, wherever there's a light part in the scene, it's going to be raised up, um, and anything that's black or dark is going to recede. So that'll these little gaps will start to read as, as gaps in the bump map. Usually bump maps, you want to keep them pretty subtle and pretty small um, because if you overdo it, then it's pretty obvious that it becomes fake looking. The other thing that we want to do is uh, adjust the reflection color using this map too. So we want to, uh, we know that it's not going to be really reflective in, in some of these dark areas. Now, th this is a little bit uh, not the greatest map. Um, if if uh, if I was to redo this again, I would uh, make it create a, a different map that was very specific in Photoshop using this as a base. But like where these knots are, um, those would be hard surfaces. So actually, those would actually be a little bit more reflective in real life. Um, but for now, we're just going to use it the way it is and uh, and put this together. So the other thing that I want you to pay attention to is is see this kind of red slash here? That indicates that the material is visible in the viewports over here. Uh, so, and the way we turn that off and on is, is this button up here, this shaded in viewport. You can see that it goes away or comes together uh, in this viewport. So the reason that you turn on and off these things is that sometimes your material maps get really big and if you have a lot of materials and they're all showing up in the viewport, it could slow your system down. So uh, it also helps focus on just what you're working on. So uh, 
I recommend kind of turning those on and off as you need. Now you'll notice that uh, I'm showing this in the viewport and in our viewport over here, it uh, is showing as the, uh, the colored, but uh, in actuality, it's gonna be changed when we render it, it will be this color. So if I wanted to be a little bit more accurate in terms of that, I would turn this one off and turn this one on in the viewport and you can kind of see. The reason I didn't do that is because it's a little difficult to tell and scale the, the, the uh, map. So that's why I'm coming back over here and uh, using the original to, to view. That way I can make sure that it's scaled. Okay, so we've got this Corona material. So let's go in here and look at this map. So if we double click on that, we see that we have uh, different ways in which we can map this, uh, this bitmap, okay? And uh, so we have an environment mode in which uh, it's not, let's not worry about that really at this moment. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about real world scale. So uh, as much as possible when you're using materials, uh, it's best to use real world scale, especially for architecture and uh, design practices because it's a little, it makes sense and you can keep it a little bit more realistic. And so basically what it's saying is, okay, how big is this texture and how big is it in relationship to, uh, to the material, to the object itself? So right now we have this thing that's saying it's, it's six meters, but let's, uh, let's adjust that down to be three meters. And as you can see, we're getting a change down here this changes, okay? And that's still too big, roughly. So we want to, you know, maybe drop it down to one meter. Okay, so that's starting to look about the right size, okay? Um, and we want it to be repeat tiling mode. Uh, the angle is fine right now. So let's, let's keep that up. Now let's go and take a look at the color correction, what I did. So the color correction is really simple. On this one, all I'm doing is, is desaturating it completely. And then I'm also adjusting the brightness down so that it's a, not quite as bright and dark because it, we don't want it to be super reflective because it's wood. Uh, and then let's go over here and take a look at this one. Now this one, I, did, I turned down the saturation, but not all the way, so down to minus 90-ish. And then I turned up the contrast, and then also the brightness is turned down, uh, and the contrast is turned down. So uh, both of those, about 75% and 44%, negative 44 and 76, okay? So that gets us this kind of uh, dark texture, but it doesn't take away all of the color. Now let's double click on this and see what we, what we look at. Uh, one thing, you can uh, double click on this view por portal, and if you double click on it, it'll make that preview a little bit bigger. I like to have a little bit bigger preview so I can see what, what's happening there. Uh, now, if we, when we double click on this, we start to see these diffuse options, and part of this diffuse option is this level. Uh, we want it to be full, so we want this full map to come in. And you can see here, this map is, is actually referring, this M refers to the map, which is this color correction map. And you can go and change the names of these things to make it a little bit more clear what they are. Uh, here is uh, the reflection level. So I turned down the reflection level to, or turned it to 0.2, because we want it to be reflective, but not too super reflective. The Fresnel is that kind of angled refraction that I've talked about, and uh, it defaults to like 1.5, but I've turned it up to three, so it has a little bit of uh, uh, reflection. And I've turned down the glossiness, because this isn't a glossy material, so that's turned down. And then I didn't mess with the refraction. The refraction is all the same. And then uh, refraction is where we adjust for the transparency. So for glass, if I want this totally transparent. I turn that to one and you can see it becomes transparent. Uh, 
So, but that's not what we want. Uh, so don't confuse, this is where we control transparency, not down here in opacity. Opacity is about uh, the kind of translucence that something would have, like your hand or uh, a wax, uh, a candle or something like that. It's translucent. You can, light can go through it, but it's not transparent, which is different. Okay, so that's our wood wall. Uh, go to the internet and do a search and find this knotty texture or a uh, wood texture. Bring it in, and you bring it in by just click and dragging this bitmap onto the onto the uh, just click and drag and drop it. And that's how you create this bitmap. Then just drag, click and drag, and point these things together. Okay. So then the next thing I want to show uh, is how we apply this. Okay, so how do we apply a material? So what we want to do is come over here and we've already organized ourselves. So we have all of our wood walls and they're all set together. So we come over here and we select it. And then just over here we can peek and we can see that they are selected. Then uh, we right click in the material editor and we just say assign material to selection. Click that and then it's assigned. Okay, let's close this down. Now we can see here, yours might be sideways or some other kind of uh, modifications that uh, aren't exactly to your liking. Oh, what happened here? Let's zoom in. So the next thing we want to do is just look at our texture mapping. And uh, as you can probably tell already, this, this is not accurately mapped. Okay, so we have some weirdness going on where it's a little tighter here, and then we've got these edges, and then this side is, is longer, and so there's a bunch of funky stuff happening. So what we wanna do is come over, we make sure that our wood walls are selected, and then let's come over to the modifier list and let's mess with the UVW. Now you've already done the UV unwrap, now let's use the UV map tool. So we come over here, UVW map. Okay, so that puts us on a, on a thing. So great thing is we can use some basics. So, uh, what we know, this is a box. We don't have any weird uh, geometry, so we can select a box as the basic mapping. Okay, and then we can also, you know, manipulate the, the alignment. And we have some real world map size, so we have some of these issues that we have to go back and now that I've changed the real world map, uh, we can go back and adjust it. So, okay, right now it's super tiling. So let's go back to our map editor. And let's go over here. And I'm just dragging this over to the side a little bit so that I can double click on the map. And here's this real world map size. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, is just come over here and I'm gonna start to adjust this. So let's say, the width of this map, let's go back to six. Let's try that out. And let's go six. We know it's a square map, so I want to uh, keep the aspect ratio. And that's actually looking pretty good. So six and six, that seems to be, that seems to be pretty good. So we'll keep with that. Now yours will vary, so you can adjust just adjust it up and down as it's needed because you may not be using the same map, which is the you know with a you might have it a different size, so you'll just have to adjust that a little bit. Okay, so we've got that set, and uh, it's it's pretty. I'm gonna click down here to the zoom so that I have a little bit more subtle control, and I can kind of come in here and take a look. And yeah, that that looks good. That looks like a good scale. All right, so let's do that. And uh, what I want you to do now is to you know, take a look at these things and uh, 
start to create your materials. I'm going to show you a couple more materials that we can work on. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is let's um, let's look at this slab. Let's create this slab. All right. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find our slab and I'm going to select it so that we have it. And then we have this slab material that I've been working on. Okay. So the slab material is going to show a use of a different type of map called a tile map, which is down here at the bottom tiles. So click and drag that over. But first let's, uh, you'll notice I made a new tab. And then the next thing you'll want to do is uh, go to our scene materials. And let's drag out our slab. So click on this and drag it out and drop it. And then the other thing you'll notice again, we have a color correction. So just click and drag that out. And so we'll have these three things. And so what we'll do here is uh, first let's set up the tiles. Okay, so we set up the, the tiles here. And uh, when we double click on that, uh, it might be helpful. Let's, uh, let's uh, make sure that this is assigned. I have those selected, the slab selected. I'm just gonna assign the material. Yours won't have, yours won't say this because I've already created this material. Okay. And we see the tiles. Uh, we're showing that in the viewport now. And as we look at it, what you'll, you'll see here is that down here we have some controls. We have standard controls. This is the scaling and the real world scale again. Okay, and we're talking one meter by one meter. Uh, we'll adjust that in a moment. And then uh, this the, the type of bond that we want. So what I've selected in the standard control is I want a stacked bond. So the stacked bond is going to get me uh, this, uh, this tile where it's not uh, uh, running bond. So it's, it's set up like this a little bit different. If we wanted running bond, you know, we could do this and you can see that that would start to select flow. Okay, let's, let's use that. Then I'm gonna come down here to advanced controls and uh, I can adjust some textures. So if I had some textures that I wanted to uh, set up for the tiles, I could do that. Um, and so one of the things I'm messing with here is this horizontal count. So I'm having two to four because I want a long kind of linear uh, horizontal. So two units to four units. Uh, so we get a little bit different. Uh, uh, in two units, it means two tiles to four tiles. Okay. The other thing that uh, the grout texture, it's a little bit uh, darker. And uh, if we wanted to emphasize that more, we could. And then the horizontal gap at 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 0.5 should be the same. So that's basically all we need to do there. That gets us set up. Um, I've changed the color a little bit to be not so white. Uh, it's a little bit gray. And then all I'm doing here is for the bump map, again, uh, I'm just doing a subtle uh, correction so that uh, it emphasizes the uh, contrast is way up, so it emphasizes the cracks, okay? And then all I've done is created this and put this into the diffuse color and this one into the bump map, and we've got our, we've got our map, okay? So now what we wanna do, since we have that all set, let's close that, and let's take a look at, uh, at this, this map down here. OK. 
Okay. So what we want to do with our slab selected, let's go back over to the modifier and let's use the UVW map and let's select that. And again, let's use the box. Okay. And you can see here now, now it's, it's uh, selected and kind of routed in. And, uh, and I'm okay with the real world size of that. Um, we might want to make it a little bit bigger. So if we wanted to do that, we just come over to the material editor here and uh, double click on this guy and say, all right, well, this is now, let's say, three meters by three meters. So that could give us uh, something that's, that's a little bit bigger. Okay, that seems, that seems fine. Now we could be a little bit more nitpicky because of the angles and you can see that it's running at uh, an angle, but that's okay for now. Uh, so that's, now we've got it, we've got it aligned and, and it's working and mapping for the, the most part. We can fiddle around with that, but that gets us the basics. Uh, what I like to do is get all of the basic pieces put together and then uh, work on uh, developing that, uh, fine-tuning the details. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is click over here to the more interesting ones, which would be the glass. Okay, so what I've done is I've dragged over door glass, and I've also dragged over the curtain wall material. The door glass is pretty much pretty simple. So let's start there. The door glass is just clear. And so some of the things that we just need to do here is there's no maps involved. Uh, what I want to do is turn up the reflection. I use 0.9. Uh, you could use one, but uh, I generally try not to use full on white and full on black and full uh, reflection or zero reflection, but because sometimes if you overdo it, 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 it takes away some of the subtlety. So I'm using 0.9. I'm leaving the Fresnel reflection at 1.52, which is normal. I've turned up the glossiness to one. The refraction, I'm going to one because it is transparent material. I'm leaving, uh, leaving this uh, uh, index at 1.5. I've turned up the glossiness to one on both of these. And then the, the subtle difference is I'm clicking thin, no refraction. Um, because we, well, we've only created them as thin panes, as one single polygon, we want to use that as thin. This will speed up our renders, especially uh, for thin, thin elements like outdoors. Now, if I was doing a close-up of a glass, a glass you know, container that has some water in it or something, I would not do that. I would leave that on because otherwise it will look weird. Uh, so uh, that's our basic glass material. And then I'm going to use those basic settings as the same uh, kind of starting point for our curtain wall material. And our curtain wall material is going to be a combination of uh, our tile and also uh, this gradient. So we'll get to the gradient in a minute, but I want to just to look at the tile first. So what we're going to do is get that set up, the curtain wall basically set up in the same way uh, that we're, we're doing with the, uh, the door glass. And then we're gonna add this tile map. So come over here to the tiles, click and drag that over, create a tile. And then let's go over here into the edit of this one. And it doesn't really matter what we're using because what I want is I want to change the count to one tile by one tile. Um, what that means is that it, it's only going to create one tile. Okay. And then with some experimentation, uh, what I found is this is, we're changing this to white, to full on white, because we don't want it to affect anything. And then this one here, we're going to change to black, uh, not full black. It's, it's a darker kind of black, almost black full black but not quite and then the horizontal gap uh, I had to play with and well, I just had to adjust back and forth to make sure that the the seams when we look at this let's uh, turn this on so 
so that the seams were uh, were right at the grout at the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's do a quick rendering here so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see how there's that line. That's what we're going to be creating with this with this grout line. That creates the the gaskets between the different panels and uh, just like we have on the original on the real building and then we're going to get into the subtle things of the gradients and uh, that's what I want you to to focus on working in class today is to work on on this piece of uh, figuring out how to uh, create this gradient uh, for the glass Okay, uh, that's it for today.